Welcome back. And it was a busy Sunday and last of the three-day visit to Nigeria for the royal couple, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who attended a fundraising event for the Invictus Games. The event, which took place at the Delborough Hotel in Victoria Island, was attended by several dignitaries. The couple also visited Governor Babajide Sonwolu at the Lagos House Marina, where the governor promised to support foreign innovation which would bring about development and growth to Nigeria. For Prince Harry, this is, um, it's been a very interesting and very informative um, trip to the country. He's seen a lot, he's still soaking in a whole lot. And part of the things that we're hoping that he will also take away is to see the, the diversity, you know, and the extent, you know, of how big our country is and how we continue to ensure that we live, you know, together in peace and harmony and how Lagos, what role Lagos plays in that whole conversation. They've been to Kano, they've been to Abuja, here now in Lagos. Um, I'm sure they have their own experience of what Nigeria looks like. And we've extended additional invitation to them that they can always come back you know, when they want to. But we're indeed happy for what they are doing, you know, especially for our military men uh, on the conversations around mental issues, mental health issues, mental illness, you know, and how they can galvanize their various NGOs and ensuring that people that require those supports um, both in military and in private can seek those support and the conversation around mental health issues you know is also something that we all live around and you know the denial the stigmatization is out of our you know it's out of one of the things that uh, we, we've, we've talked about and more importantly the Invictus game that Prince Harry is known for you know at what point can we have it in Nigeria so that you know um, the true Nigerian you know competitiveness can also be reflective, you know, in that game. And earlier in the day, the Duke and Duchess attended a basketball clinic held at the Lupeju Junior Grammar School in Lagos, organized by Giants of Africa, a brainchild of Masai Ujiri, Nigerian-born president of Toronto Raptors. The clinic was organized in collaboration with the couple's Archwell Foundation to empower young people and build bonds among communities. The power of sport can change lives. It brings people together and creates community. And there are no barriers, which is the most important thing. So myself, my wife, as we walked in, I think we saw that um, knowledge is power, which is a very, very true thing. I will say on a personal note, I lived in Toronto for seven years, went to quite a few Raptors games. And that was the first time I had heard of Giants of Africa. You want to talk about full circle. Never did I think that we would be able to be here all these years later supporting the expansion of this incredible organization through our foundation, the Archwell Foundation. So we are just so grateful. We're proud of all the work that you're doing for everyone who helped bring this event together today. Thank you for the media who's here covering it to expand the knowledge for everyone to know how incredible the work is that they are doing here. Thank you for being here to cover that. And to all of you, we just can't wait to see how well you play. Don't tempt me to try to do any basketball. My husband is the athletic one. <laughs> but thank you, and we're happy to be here, and let's have a fun afternoon. Away from the royal visit now to security. Barely 24 hours after two police officers were killed in Enugu State, gunmen have reportedly struck again in the state, killing three police officers and one official of the Federal Road Safety Corps in different attacks in Unsuka and Udenu local government areas in the state. According to eyewitness accounts, the gunmen attacked the police division in Umabo, Eha Alumona in Unsuka Area Council on Saturday night, killing two policemen. In a separate attack, gunmen also killed a federal road safety personnel, as well as a police officer attached to the traditional ruler of Egali Amala community in Oba, Udenu local government area. His Royal Highness Igwe Patrick Eze, also known as Igwe Waziri. Meanwhile, the police is yet to give any official statement regarding the killings. Governor Pitamba had placed a 10 million naira bounty on the killers of the two policemen that were murdered on Friday. 
And on the bright side, four, 14 students of the Confluence University in Kogi have been rescued from their abductors. According to a statement by the state governor, their rescue was made possible by local vigilante groups and other security agents after a gun battle with their abductors. The governor of Kogi State, Mr. Usman Ududu, had earlier visited the institution to assure parents of the safe return of their children and wards. And from security to politics, River State to be precise, where the FCT minister, Mr. Yesam Wiki, has said his decision to support Governor Simlai Fubara in the 2023 election is a mistake which he is ready to correct and he apologizes for it. Mr. Wiki, who was speaking at a function in Ogubolo, local government area of Rivers, apologized to the people of the local government for his role in the emergence of Mr. Fubara as governor. I respect people who appreciate what God has done for them, who appreciate what God has used people to do for them. God does not come down. God uses people to help people. So when you are being help, you appreciate them, and then God will know that you have also appreciated him. I have never told anybody to worship me. Nobody can worship man. All of us believe that we only have one God, and it's only that God we worship, and we continue to worship that God. But as politicians, we appreciate people who have helped you. you know, I want to say this clearly. Well, in life, when you have made a mistake, you say you have made a mistake. There's nothing you can do about it. I have made a mistake. I own it up. And I say, God, forgive me. And I'll say, all of you, forgive me. But we'll correct it at the appropriate time. I'm a human being. I'm bound to make a mistake. My judgment can be wrong. So forgive me for making a wrong uh, judgment. Heavy words there. In the meantime, a lawmaker representing a harder West constituency in Rivers, Mr. Sokari Goodboy, has warned against alleged plans by some politicians in the state to truncate Governor Simlai Fubara's administration. Mr. Goodboy, who is a supporter of the governor, says the widespread acceptance of Governor Fubara as a result of his people-centered programs and policies is evidence that the administration has come to stay. He made the remark during a reception organized by his constituency following his release from police custody and his emergence as the leader of the pro Fubara faction in the House of Assembly. And more politics it's in River State Steel. Um, we have this one. Some top politicians have condemned Governor Fubara over his alleged intention to demolish parts of the River State House of Assembly quarters. The group comprising of current and former lawmakers gave their position after a solidarity visit to the Assembly quarters on Sunday. I've been disturbed to got information about the leakages and problems with the structures that last time we saw the government coming. Uh, saying that he was going to intervene by breaking down some of the structures and rebuild the place. For us, after what happened to the River State House Assembly, which is the best in the country, we do not want another structure destroyed without being replaced. We actually invited some engineers to look at their own structures and they are looking at what is on here. I'm sure it's the person occupying the building that should be able to tell us what is wrong. That's why we are here this morning. There is certainly nothing wrong with this structure. This structure is fully in use, fully functional, and all the experts that the Rivers Assembly has employed have confirmed to us that 
this building is one of the best in the entire West Africa. We are happy with the building. Everything is working. We didn't write to the governor. We didn't invite him. We didn't ask him for help. And we don't need his help. We don't need his intervention in any way. As far as we are concerned, any attempt to talk about reconstruction or demolition is clearly an assault on democracy. It's clearly an assault on members who are residents in, in all of these buildings. Away from reverse politics now, the management of the National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, is assuring Nigerians of the security of their data and better service delivery in the nearest future. The Director General of the Commission, Mrs. Abisoye Koka Udushote, told Channels Television that the agency is working to ensure that its staff are properly equipped to deliver on the mandate in a secure and effective manner. According to Mrs. Koka Udushote, the tools that the Commission has been using are as old as 2011, but that is about to change. And outside our shores, the Kremlin has announced that President Vladimir Putin is set to replace his long-standing ally, Sergei Shoigu, as defense minister. The 68-year-old, who has played a key role in Russia's war with Ukraine, has been in the role since 2012 and is to be appointed head of Russia's Security Council. Papers published by the upper chamber of the Russian parliament said Mr. Shoigu will be replaced by Deputy Prime Minister Andrei Belusov. And how Mr. Putin wants Mr. Shoigu to take over from Nikolai Patrushev on the powerful Security Council. And in sports, Mikel Arteta's dreams seem to be unfolding for real, with Arsenal ensuring that the Premier League title race will go to the last day of the season after returning to the top of the standings with a 1-0 win at Manchester United on Sunday. Leandro Trossard's 20th minute goal at Old Trafford means the Londoners will take defending champion Manchester City to the final round of games next Sunday. Anything other than a win for Arsenal against United could have seen City clinch the title with victory at Tottenham on Tuesday. Arteta's team duly delivered and moved one point clear at the top. Arsenal will host Everton in the final round when City is at home against West Ham after Tuesday's game at Spurs. And on that exciting note, we wrap up top stories.